Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Daniel Rosal here. This YouTube channel is all about everything to do with living in Israel and Jerusalem. I'm bringing you this video today a little bit hungover, and that is because it is Yom Ha'atzma'ut, Israel's uh, national day, its 75th birthday, which is just crazy. There are plenty of people walking out there on the streets that are older than uh, the state of Israel has been in existence, but Israel has turned 75. And the Independence Day is a big celebration in Israel. The Israeli Air Force do a flyover uh, on the night of Yom Ha'atzma'ut, and that's the thing about the Jewish calendar. It starts on the night and ends at the night. So Yom Ha'atzma'ut started last night, so uh, there was lots and lots of fun in uh, Jerusalem city center, lots of parties, lots of uh, drinking, lots of music. Thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. And uh, today it's uh, more typical for folks to do stuff like barbecues. That's like the big classic Yom Ma'ut pastime. So I'm getting ready to tend to uh, a quiet barbecue in a few minutes. But I thought as an act of national service on the 75th birthday of Israel, I would talk about uh, 10 things that are great and good about living in Israel. So here's my list. Okay, so starting this off in no particular order and not ordered by significance, I'm going to go with uh, Israeli wine as my number one choice because this is one of those things, you know, we're going to get onto the heavy stuff about Israel being the only Jewish country in the world. But let's just start off with something almost everyone can uh, appreciate, and that is good wine. It used to be an oxymoron to say Israeli wine. It was terrible. There was kind of kiddish wine in the Jewish world, and that's what people thought Israeli wine was. But... Everything has changed dramatically in the period since. And now Israel is pretty established as a wine terroir, if I'm saying that correctly, of growing importance on the international scene. And you can go visit. Wine tasting is a popular pastime here. So lots of the wineries, the smaller ones at least, will allow you to come into their place uh, and they'll tell you about their wine. And it's amazing where, where you can find wineries in Israel. We went down to the Egyptian border. Their videos are on my YouTube channel. In fact, I have a playlist about the wineries I visited in Israel. I'll put a link to it. But something I'm realizing after living here for eight years is you need to kind of stack the positives of living in a country as far as possible. And I think one of the big positives about living in Israel is the Mediterranean lifestyle that you can have here. Such good weather. And I think that alcohol in moderation, wine in moderation can definitely be uh, can definitely be a, a, a nice a nice part of that, I think. Uh, so there's lots of good wine here in Israel. And unlike so much in Israel, it's relatively affordable. You don't need to spend generally more than 30 shackles, 40 shackles, which is like eight or ten dollars to get a very drinkable bottle of wine. Now, I'm far from a wine expert, but I would like to think I know a good rosé from a bad one. That's my favorite color of wine. Uh, and uh, there's lots of good wine in Israel. And we're seeing a growing trend of wine bars opening up, which I'm very excited about because I think it's uh, wine bars are wonderful. And uh, if you need a recommendation for a wine bar in Jerusalem or Tel Aviv, drop me a comment. I'll be happy to send you to some cool places. Second pro positive about living in Israel. The country is really small. I did a video recently comparing the size of Israel to Ireland and I think I got the fact that Israel is something like 200, a little bit over 200 square kilometers. I could be totally botching that figure but it's a very very small uh, land area. One figure that I that I know I'm not botching is Ireland is like three to four times bigger than Israel and Ireland's not a very big country that's where I originally come from so the fact that Israel is super small can be a disadvantage because it can feel a little bit claustrophobic here at times but I also think it's a major advantage it's it's a small country but it varies so dramatically like the parts of the country when you go up to the north of Israel you're in this like lush forested area with spectacular views of mountains, the mountains stretching up to uh, Syria and Lebanon. And then you go down into the, then you have like Tel Aviv and the whole kind of like coastal plain, which is very sort of hip and uh, fun. Uh, lots to do there, great beaches, what have you. Um, and then you can go to the south of the country and you're in an arid desert, right? Stretching out for hundreds of kilometers, literally. And actually one of my favorite places in Israel are at both ends of the country. I love Matula on the Lebanese border. It's not, perhaps you could say, the most spectacular place, um, the town itself, but I don't know. I like it. I love exploring borders and I've had some good times in Matula. And uh, Mitzpe Ramon in the desert is uh, also one of my favorite places. I think it's a lot nicer than Eilat and definitely a cool place to check out.
Okay, positive three, and uh, this would actually be, um, this is really the number one positive for me, but I'm trying to sort of order this video so that it's not just from a, let's say, Jewish perspective. But the whole reason I moved to Israel is because I am Jewish. And living in Israel as a Jewish person, there's really nowhere else I would rather live my life. What I love about being Jewish in Israel is that it's integrated into the state and it's the only Jewish majority uh, country in the world which I think again it's kind of like sometimes you could say that's a bad thing you've only got one option if that's uh, if you want to live somewhere where you're not in a religious minority and the other on the other respect it's an advantage because you don't really have a difficult choice to make you've got basically Israel. What I love about uh, Judaism practicing Judaism in Israel is again as I mentioned it's integrated right it's not like you need to live in in a specific neighborhood and like there's a list of kosher restaurants now i live in jerusalem so it's a bit more you know there's more kosher let's say food than other places in the country but there's tons of kosher food options here for every type of uh, culinary interest whether you're into uh, asian food or you love just a good greasy shawarma you've got it covered um the national religious days in judaism are at the public holidays in israel so you don't need to use up your uh, vacation time just to observe your religion because during those religious holidays jews religious jews abstain from work and using even electricity so um that makes it very difficult to uh you know to so that's nice it's baked into the country and uh there's just a great feeling from not being a small minority like growing up in uh you know in cork ireland i was like sort of almost the only Jewish family in the entire city. And what I love about Judaism in Israel is you get to transcend your Judaism because we're most of us who come from different parts of the world to move to Israel, which you call in Hebrew making Aliyah, because most of us, I think, made that decision for that reason. We can define ourselves in ways that don't involve just being Jewish. Reason four, uh, the diversity of the food in Israel, firstly, the food is, if I can say so, great. Uh, there is uh, falafel. Now, these are the foods that I enjoyed a lot more and enjoyed so much that I had to get an organ cut out of me. I'm talking about my uh, dear, beloved, departed gallbladder. So I have, I, I'm trying to be a bit more healthy now. So stuff like falafel is slightly off the menu for me, but I still, I still love falafel. Um, you know, talking about more healthy foods, fresh salads. There's a huge emphasis in Israeli cooking on uh, using fresh ingredients and the use of preservatives here is also not a big thing you'll even see this when you buy bread from the supermarket that if you keep it out on the counter in the hot summer it'll start like going very very badly off like growing mold in uh, two days it's just they don't really use preservatives um and they just the amount of fresh ingredients at uh, one particular food and it's it's kind of a melting pot the Israeli cuisine is sort of a melting pot from Jews from all over the world. So you've got Jews coming from, you know, Arab countries like Tunisia, introducing amazing dishes like shakshuka into Israeli cuisine. Of course, you've got falafel, classic Middle Eastern food. And there's also even a substantial Russian population here of uh, Russian Jewish immigrants to Israel, which means, of course, there are uh, good Russian bars where I spent uh, probably a little bit too much time and money. And uh, last night, uh, there's good Russian bars bars in Israel and uh, there's Russian food as well uh, Russian restaurants so uh, yeah it's definitely um, and I want to say one one another food stuff that is very you wouldn't associate with Israel necessarily is Ethiopian food there are again a lot of uh, Ethiopian Jewish immigrants to Israel and they bring with them their cuisine uh, so Ethiopian food's amazing it's become my second favorite food I would only put it after maybe Indian and Nepalese food and I don't even know sort of which way I'd have to order those two but I love uh, I love those foods I l I've come to really love Ethiopian food you get a flat bread called injera and you scoop it up if you haven't tried it ne when next time you're in tel aviv or jerusalem put ethiopian restaurant into google maps and you'll be surprised uh, to see how many options there are and just pick one that gets a good rating and go there and you might also become a convert to ethiopian food Reason five to love living in Israel. Tel Aviv has great beaches and uh, that's not to be taken uh, for granted. But uh, Tel Aviv is not the only uh, place with beaches in Israel. Israel has all the way along uh, its western coastline down to the Gaza Strip and up to the border with Lebanon. Uh, there are beaches. The southernmost beach in Israel, the one right by where the Gaza Strip starts, is called Zikim. It's actually a pretty cool beach. There is surfing in Israel, which I really need to get back into because it was one of my 
uh, biggest hobbies uh, growing up. Uh, in Tel Aviv, you have a lot of uh, tourist beaches and it's a great place to, to hang out. Palmachim is a really nice beach that I want to recommend uh, to people. Um, it's a little bit more uh, quiet than the beaches in Tel Aviv. It's a public nature park, so you do need to pay an entrance fee. Uh, but I find it much more pleasant, less people blasting music and it's just a more laid, laid back vibe. So that's actually my uh, favorite beach in Israel. Uh, Habonim in the north is also a really nice beach that I can recommend. Habonim. Um, I'll put a little sort of like graphics uh, to check out. So don't limit yourself to checking out the beaches of Tel Aviv. If you have a car or you're renting a car, go up and down the coastline because it's cheap. And it's uh, quick. Haifa's even got a couple of uh, of beaches. And of course, uh, can't forget the Dead Sea, which has beaches as well. There's Kalia Beach in the north um, and other beaches along the coast of the Dead Sea. The Dead Sea is a very different experience because during the summer, it is crazy, crazy hot there. Uh, the you can't really swim obviously because it's you know the dead sea and it's like salty uh so i personally for the it's kind of like novelty i i personally prefer going to the beaches on the mediterranean but some people really like the dead sea it's supposed to be very good for stuff like asthma and skin conditions and i actually have asthma so maybe i should be doing more dead sea expeditions random um Thing number six on my list, easy access to Tubi Shishim. When I was putting together this list today, I was thinking from back to last night, I was thinking, what can I say is so great about Israel? And there's so many things not on this list, like the diversity of the population. If you are Jewish and you're looking to, you know, to marry Jewish, how easy it is, uh, good options within uh, both uh, genders, whatever gender you are. But then I was like, you know, the little things as well. Tubi Shishim, it's so good. It's this Israeli spirit uh, based around citrus. And uh, it's a uniquely Israeli product. It's made here. Ginger, it's got like ginger, lemon. It's just amazing. Tubi's fantastic. Unfortunately, Tubi has a reputation among Israeli bartenders for being a drink for students, which is just terrible. It is so much more than that. Um, I love fruity stuff. I love fruity cocktails uh, more than they love me back. Um, but that's actually one of my favorite drinks as well. And you can make very simple cocktails by taking a bit of Tubi Shishim. Shishim in Hebrew means 60. A little bit of ice and tiny touch of water. And beautiful. Reason seven is the sunny weather. Uh, I mean, it's hot in Israel. Uh, it gets really hot and the summer is really long. What I find interesting about the climate here coming from uh, Ireland is it's kind of like, there, it feels like there's only really two seasons. You've got a big, long, hot summer that stretches all the way to September, even early October before there's like a real noticeable cooling in the temperatures and it starts around this time of year. I'm recording this video, uh, but uh, it's sunny and during that time, there's just like no rain essentially. Every day is uh, sunny. So it means that you can't sort of banter about the weather forecast, which is one of the most popular pursuits in Ireland. But if you're into sunny weather, hot weather, weather to go to the beach, lots and lots and lots of sunshine in Israel. Number eight, and this is actually, I would consider a big one that if I was reordering this list, if I had a little bit more energy today, I might've put this like towards the top. Healthcare system in Israel. There is really, really top class healthcare in Israel that's affordable and Israel sort of makes it available to all its citizens. I've done a couple of separate videos on how healthcare works in Israel, just a real basic stuff. But, you know, everyone has to be a member of one of four Kupot Cholim, that's a health fund. Um, and that gives you like your basics. That gives you your doctor visits, your specialist visits, medications at very, very discounted uh, rates. I've talked about that also in a video. And um, it's just affordable to get like conditions treated. Um, I don't mind sharing a bit about my, my personal uh, medical history. I have a depression and the um, antidepressants I take every day, Trintalix, are super affordable compared to what they are in the US. And I'm currently in the process of attempting to get my blood blood pressure down. So I was able to do a test yesterday, 24 hour blood pressure thing. And that was like basically free as well. So, you know, no one's going to move to Israel because of the healthcare, I don't think. And uh, hopefully people don't have health problems that requiring healthcare, but eventually probably most of us will. Um, and I really have very limited criticisms or just almost all almost exclusively positive things uh, to say about the quality, accessibility, and affordability of healthcare in Israel. 
Okay, getting towards the end. Reason number nine. Um, it's easy and cheap uh, to travel to Europe. Uh, people wouldn't think about Israel as a really sort of a great travel destination, travel base, I mean, definitely a travel destination, but it's actually a great base for traveling into Europe. And this is a reason that's going to maybe appeal more to um, any Americans who watch this video than folks from other countries. But... Traditionally, it was expensive, like everything, to fly to and from Israel. Then, Israel and the EU concluded something called the Open Skies Agreement, in which basically reciprocal Israeli, Israeli airlines get to fly to European destinations, and the European airlines start flying to Israel, breaking the monopoly of, uh, you know, airlines like El Al, what have you. And what that has, the change that that has uh, brought to the travel market here has been really, really uh, quite significant. You have now Ryanair operating in Israel, EasyJet, uh, Wizz Air. I've gone plane spotting a couple of times here, uh, sitting at the edge of the, you know, the airport and recording on my little camera here, uh, take off the landings. And it was just extraordinary, all the airlines that are here. There's like, I haven't heard of half of these. There's like Air, Air Dubai or Dubai Hops. Since Israel signed the uh, agreement, the Abraham Accords, there's been, there's been a huge uh, surge in traffic uh, between those two countries. So lots and lots of flights going back and forth to Dubai these days. And speaking of Ireland, uh, El Al actually just recently started the first ever direct flight to Ireland from Israel that is scheduled. There was one that only ran in the summer. And that's going on a few times uh, per week now. It's a five-hour flight. Uh, so if you want to get to uh, to Ireland, uh, you can now do so on a direct flight with El Al from Israel. And I think it runs something like three times a week. Okay, the final reason, because so far we've talked about kind of very much uh, lifestyle stuff. I want to talk a little bit maybe about professional things as well. Um, great country. This is the last list. I actually, I'm, I'm using sort of a, a low budget teleprompter here. I've got a piece of paper taped to my tripod. Um, and it says, great country to launch tech careers. Um, so speaking of uh, professional stuff for a moment, Israel is known as a startup nation because there are so many startups here. Now, it's true that recently in the last year, there's kind of been murmurs of a slowdown in what we call in Israel high tech, which really means that whole world of startups. But uh, it's still a pretty vibrant scene. Now, it doesn't mean that you, you don't have to be a coding prodigy to work at one of these uh, companies. There's obviously lots of jobs within these companies like sales, marketing. I personally work in uh, marketing communications or right now I work for a nonprofit, but before that I really worked for tech companies. Uh, so that's a big employer in Israel. And definitely, you know, if you want to reskill or upskill or whatever, there's uh, boot camps, what they call boot camps now, uh, throughout Israel, there where you'll do an abbreviated course in, you know, whatever you want to sort of, uh, whatever field you want to do, whether it's UX design, product design, uh, content writing probably doesn't require a course, but that's also, you know, if you're really into writing, that's a decent way to enter the world of uh, high tech and maybe move on to other uh, more lucrative positions uh, within the company. Okay, I need to go tend to my barbecue now on uh, Yom HaAtzma'ut. Uh, these were my, uh, on the 75th birthday of Israel, these were my 10 reasons I love living in Israel. Uh, 10 things I think are super positive about the country. Yes, there are negatives. Uh, spoiler alert for the counter video to this is the cost of living is absurd. It's way too expensive to live here. But... Let's talk today about the good things, and those are my uh, 10 reasons. Hope this video uh, has been informative, interesting. Give me your thoughts. Uh, if you live in Israel, what are your top 10 uh, list or just anything really that you love about living here? And of course, as I always say at the end of my videos, if you do want to get more videos from my good self about life in Israel and Jerusalem, hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching, guys.